Welcome everyone. Uh, today's video is going to be using the Daiwa Silver Creek RTW Stream Custom. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is test casting a variety of lures, just get the casting capabilities of the uh, Silver Creek. Uh, I, I do have a video as well that is more practical stream fishing, uh, but this one's just going to cover the like you know the lightest lures, so, so maybe like one gram up to maybe about five or six grams, just to give you a little bit of feel of how the, this reel casts compared to other BFS reels. So if you want to see that, keep watching. Also comment down below what other BFS footage you want to see. To start off with, I'm going to use the Creep AIM-46S. Uh, it's a pretty staple stream lure for me. I've used it uh, in many, many videos. I've caught many fish with it, so this is going to be a good test. I just want to see kind of the distance that I, I get with this lure and also uh, some fine tuning with the brakes to see if short range casting to long range casting takes any sort of brake adjustments. Uh, right now I'm on brake setting 5 out of a possible 20. This lure weighs 4 grams. That's a pretty respectable distance uh, just for a pretty uh, conservative cast. And with the fixed brake inductor spool, uh, they really like having a more gentle casting motion. Uh, so a little bit softer rod like this glass rod I have here uh, does help uh, keep, your, keep your casting motion uh, pretty, pretty soft. But also if you, if you lower the brakes, don't change your casting motion. Don't try to force the brake because it's, a very, it's constant braking, but it's very light. So it's not going to be adaptable to like that peak RPM of your spool to apply the uh, proper braking. That's, that's a pretty respectable distance. Uh, I think I could get further than that if I turn the brakes up, which sounds counterintuitive, but if you turn the brakes up with your fixed inductor spools and then you cast a little bit harder, uh, a lot of times you can get a little bit extra distance that way. But the, the focus of a fixed inductor spool is the, the short to mid-range casting having a lot of accuracy. But if you do need to cast far, uh, there are ways to do it. Yeah. It feels really, really controlled. That's one thing I should say. I'm gonna reel this back in real fast. I'm gonna try to put a little bit more force into it because I turned the brakes up. Yeah, that's, that was right next to the, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but that was right next to the rock over there. Let me see if I can achieve that same distance by turning the brake dial down to four. Yeah. It was right there on the edge again. So that's that's pretty nice, and it's it's pretty flat casting too. I don't I don't I don't see it uh, gaining arc at all because the the higher your lure is in the the air, and the longer your lure is in the air, the more affected it is by wind. So I thought adjusting my brake dials on brake setting four, I'm going to cast a little bit uh, a little bit shorter just to see how flat it casts, and also like the control and accuracy. That's pretty controlled and it's there's very little thumbing too. Uh, sometimes you get spools that are really fast and can and cast short range well but it requires a lot of thumb which I mean that's no thumb using at all. Try some flip casting. Yeah that feels nice. Let's try some flip cast this way. I'm going to do a couple more flip casts. I'm going to get a little bit different angle. So you'll be able to see, I'm going to cast. Now flip casting isn't really for distance, it's more for accuracy. But I just kind of want to see the control I can get. Yeah, that's, that's all the way across the river with just a flip cast. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty impressed so far. And the ability to have your lure land soft too, that's, a, that's another good thing um, that I've noticed with fixed inductor spools because it, it does apply a, that slight breaking force the entire time. So once you do that and you use a little bit of your thumb and you can raise your rod tip up like this to get really soft presentations into the water. This is a lot of times with, uh, with your normal inductor spools, uh, like say the Daiwa 
air brake system with the you know the moving inductor or the Daiwa SV braking system, a lot of times what can happen is your your inductor pops out for like a, a very short period of time and then it retracts. So it kind of makes your casting a little irregular. So if you can see we okay. So there's a branch, there's this this branch coming up out of the water, then there's one underneath it. I'm gonna to try to do some pitching. It seems like this is gonna pitch really nice. This is still without touching the brake dial too. Hit the snow on that one. Oh wow, that's nice. Yeah, that pitch is really, really nice. And then I can just transition to long casting. Which is pretty pretty respectable distance. It's definitely it's it's better at distance casting than I initially anticipated. Uh, because the gecko beach is such a it seems like it's it's focused on distance in open water that they that Daiwa kind of did the opposite with the Silver Creek. But it seems like I can still achieve oh that it, it pitches better than I expect. For sure. Yeah, that's really nice pitching. Wow. All right, so now the lure I have on, this is an Arapala X-Rap 04. Uh, it's, a, it's a very hard, well, not very hard, but it's a pretty hard lure to cast with BFS gear. Uh, I did take the front hook off. I changed, I put up one single hook on the back and also took the front split ring off, which is a lot of the weight for this lure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna test this out, see how it goes. Yeah, it, it hung up in the air a little bit. I'm gonna turn the brakes down. But it cast out there very nice. I can tell that the, the spool had no has no challenge with this lure. I don't know the exact weight of this on top of my head, but I will post it right here. <laughs> That's pretty good. Wow. I'm actually quite surprised. Ooh. Now there's a backlash. All right, so I got that backlash out. Uh, what, how that happened was I was forcing, I was forcing the cast a little too much with these fixed inductor spools, uh, especially with these lighter lures. To get more distance, generally just turn the brakes up a little bit more and then cast a little bit harder. Just trying to cast harder, uh, a lot of times it could result in a backlash because the, the braking force, because the braking system, uh, when, when, the, when the inductor turns out, uh, that's that's to apply the maximum amount of braking for your brake dial setting uh, during those peak RPM times where your spool spinning really fast. The fixed inductor spool, it's a lighter braking, but it's constant, so it doesn't have that ability to compensate for those really fast spool speeds. Oh, another backlash, but that was a very small one. Another thing too, if you're not backlashing when you're testing out equipment, then you're just kind of limiting yourself to uh, I guess you just your own fears of backlashing uh, for me I backlash quite a bit when I'm testing out new reels just because I want to be able to see uh, What the how how much performance I can squeeze out of the reel Well, that's really good I'm, now what I'm going to do so this is on brake setting 4 I'm going to try some pitches again, uh, but just using this lure instead It hangs up a little bit right here. I'm gonna turn it down the brake setting to two. And this is probably the setting that would use it the most. Uh, let me do some casting first. Yeah, this feels a lot better doing these a uh, little bit shorter range casts uh, with, with the brake setting lower. It does feel really nice. Like if I was if I was on some creeks that I normally fish, I would, I'd feel right at home using this lure. With... Now I'm gonna to switch to a different lure. You know, I'm gonna actually try so when I did the Corrado BFS versus the Clamber uh, shootout video that I did, I was catching some brook trout. I used the lure, it's called the Jackson Cyril. It's a, it's a smaller frog lure. Let me put this back. It's a smaller frog lure. It's a, this one's a, the sinking version, it's a sinking popper. If, if my memory is correct, I, I believe it's 1.9 grams. And it could be difficult to cast sometimes but just because of how the there's no internal like weight sh system. There, there is, it is weighted a little bit, but there's no uh, transfer, like weight transfer system in there. And just kind of the, the shape of the lure, it can be difficult to cast sometimes. And it kind of gives you a false sense of security when you cast because it, it is a dense bait. 
But once once the wind blows and the wind catches that lure, uh, it can affect it quite a bit. This is what that lure looks like right here. All right. Put my brake setting back up to four. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was actually pretty good. Um, I, I know it was difficult to cast with the Corrado BFS and the Clamber. They could cast, but it was very, very, very fine. The, the way that you'd have to cast it with this. I mean, I could probably turn my brake setting down. I could be way more accurate with this reel for sure. In those in those same settings they were like uh kind of like the same range i'm casting right now but i had to really force it the the cast and it had some brush as well but this is casting it really nice okay, let me turn that down i'm gonna put on brake setting two. Oh wow <laughs> that's actually that's really good and this this spool weighs uh, i think it's about around eight and a half grams i don't remember exactly how much the spool weighs which is Almost double what the Roro spool weighs. It's the Roro AX24, uh, the, the standard version weighs 4.6 grams. Wow, this is... <laughs> I'm gonna try some flip casting as well. Uh, actually, no, I'll do pitching first. I'll try pitching. So with these lighter, with these lighter lures, a lot of times you do have to change your brake dial. Uh, and this is generally a lure that I wouldn't use for everyday trout fishing. That's pretty good. I mean, if I turn that down, uh, Brake setting one. Pretty good. Yeah, so, so why pitch, why I'm doing pitching with all these lures and why it's important is that sometimes when you're in very tight streams and let's say there's a little, there's a little dam of logs or whatever it is, uh, being able to put your lure precisely where you want it and very quiet can sometimes get you some really big fish that some people, uh, they might not try casting there. If they're just using, spin, if they're using spinning gear, you know, with like say like a Panther Martin spinner or something like that. And they, they don't want to cast it in there because they can't, they can't control the trajectory of their lure that well. That's, that's completely fresh fish that you're that you're able to fish for a lot of people may walk past that same log pile but you go in there especially if you're using like uh say a lure that has a single like a single barbless hook on there you'd be able to have a high percentage chance of catching a fish in there okay so this this test is going to be mainly for uh people that are looking to use this reel for panfish but this is out this could still work for trout pretty good too uh, so what this is this is a 132nd ounce jig it's a VMC Moon Eye Jig, and it, it's, a, it's a Northland, it's like a fry, it's actually an ice fishing uh, plastic that's on there. So it's pretty lightweight. I'm going to see how this casts. I'm going to turn my brakes up to, it seems like four is kind of like that good starting spot for me. That's a little restrictive. It got good distance, but it's a little restrictive. So I'm going to turn the brakes down to three. There's a little bit of a backlash there. With this swirling wind and a lightweight lure like that, I've, it's not unusual. I'm gonna turn my, I'm gonna turn the brakes back up. I'm just gonna try to get max distance. Ooh, a little bit too much. All right, here we go. I mean, that's a respectable distance. I think I'm gonna turn my brake dial up and then cast a little bit harder. Yeah, that feels really nice. It's, I'm not saying it's, a, um, I don't know, I, I wouldn't, this wouldn't be my first reel to get to cast these jigs, uh, just based off this initial assessment here. Like that was a little bit further, but I really had to put more more effort than I would like with a uh, fixed inductor spool. I think having a, a more dynamic braking system, like the Shimano FTB braking system, or maybe even the 
the braking system that of like the Daiwa Air, like the, with the moving inductors, would do a lot better. Let's try some short range. I'm going to put it to brake setting too. If you like using, uh, sometimes I do. I, I'll use some soft plastics for trout sometimes, but a lot of times I'm using hard baits. But it is nice to be able to see how it could cast. I'm going to put on brake setting one. Be able to cast these light lures. I can feel the rod is a, is slightly limiting the reel, but not 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 by much. Yeah, that feels nice, and that, it's it's thumb free. When I'm doing these slower casts, it's it's thumb free that I'm doing it, which is which is a big it's a big challenge finding a, a spool that can do that. Like that's pretty good distance, especially if I'm trout fishing in a river or a creek. Uh, that's that's definitely all the way across like most creeks that I fish. Or if you're fishing around docks or anything like that for panfish, it, it could definitely work. And this is just on this lower break setting. With this, now with this small jig, I'm gonna try some pitching. Uh, the, oh, break dial is actually on zero right now. <laughs> I put the break dial on zero, and now I'll see how this pitch is. Again, I'm gonna go underneath that, the log right there, and I'm gonna try to get next to the brush that's just inside, just touching the water. Actually, I'm gonna do a practice one on the outside first. Oh, that's, okay, that's doable. That feels pretty good. And, cat, and pitching very lightweight baits like this, uh, what, what you're gonna to have to do you just have to point your rod tip to where your target is. A lot of times I like to follow through up higher, especially if I'm bass fishing, that I, I'm able to get a better plane on the lure and I'm able to make it land a lot softer. But the, the, that amount of resistance going through the guides with these light lures uh, can actually hinder your performance. So a lot of times when you're pitching, you don't want to follow through as much. And a lot of times you're using shorter rods with these types of lures, so you do have a little bit more freedom uh, with your rod. It feels good, I mean, it doesn't, it's it's a tiny little jig, so I'm not expecting it to pitch like a like a bass jig or anything, but that goes pretty good. No, I mean that's that, that's 100 percent acceptable for me. All right, so there you have it. A uh, pretty pretty capable reel. I was I was quite surprised on the performance of the Silver Creek. Uh, I thought it was going to be a little bit more restrictive for distance casting, but it feels really nice. It's uh, comparing it. To the Alpha's Airstream Custom that came out a few years ago, I definitely think this has an edge over it. Uh, the the casting, the, definitely the retrieve, the ergonomics. I think it's a worthy upgrade. The only downside I can see is it doesn't come with a carbon handle. But other than that, I definitely think the Silver Creek's worth picking up if you do a lot of trout fishing. Or if looks like now uh, with my testing, it seems like even if you do a lot of that, that mid-range test uh, casting with the occasional long cast, it does really well. So if you want to see future videos on the Silver Creek, uh, make sure you comment down below what you want to see with that. But also subscribe because I'm going to do a whole bunch of different BFS footage as well. Thanks for watching.